Choosing the right glass can make your film shine, so today I will talk about the main features you should be looking to get a good stop motion lens. But to start I will need something to shoot at, so I will make a replica of my favorite clay character, and this is Weber. If you know him, go and follow Rich Weber, because this character and all, all his work is awesome. Here we are, two puppets, a camera and a bunch of lenses to test. The first thing I would take in consideration shooting stop motion puppets is the minimum focus distance. Lenses and cameras are normally designed to shoot people and puppets are a lot smaller than us. So a common minimum focus distance would be 45 cm from the sensor to the subject. And that's fine for a human, but that's too long for puppets. At that distance, we will be shooting wide shots all the time and mid shots would be impossible to make. The second thing to consider is having manual features, like a manual mechanical focus or a manual aperture ring. This last one is not common anymore and that's why in stop motion we use all lenses. Losing the aperture ring and selecting the aperture digitally from the camera may cause aperture flicker in our animations. And that's really bad, as I will show you in a future video. But don't worry, I will also show you some solutions for that. So subscribe and get the notification when this video happens. The third thing would be to use prime lenses if possible. They have less moving elements and should normally have better glass and less aberrations than zoom lenses. Another thing to consider is the camera that you are using. A full frame camera will allow you to use the lenses as they were designed, and you will get much better images from a bigger sensor. Crop sensor will also do the job, but just keep in mind that any lens you use will be zoomed by 1.6 factor, so a 50mm lens will become an 80mm lens. Last and really important one is the budget. If we could, we will be using cinema lenses all the time but they are super expensive, so we get the best lens we can afford for each situation. For example, in commercials that they last like 2 or 3 days, we can rent cinema lenses, but for short films or TV series that they take long shootings like months, we normally use a cheaper glass like all vintage lenses or L-series from Canon. Let's talk about specific lenses. I will just talk about lenses I have used and I like. And because I don't have all the lenses I would like to show you, one year ago I went to Casanova Photo to test some lenses and shoot some video for you. So thanks to Casanova, I will talk about four groups of lenses. The kit lens, the old Nikon glass, the Canon L series and the cinema glass. The 18 to 55 mm Canon kit lens is a super versatile and cheap option to begin. You can make incredible stuff with this lens. It does the job and it focuses super close, at 22 cm. So it's great. So we still use it for our second set or for any test we are going to take. I would specially recommend this one to start and learn how to work with a camera. My only advice would be to avoid STM focus systems, as those systems are no longer mechanically actuated. The main dome part of this lens is the build quality. It's all made of plastic, and the focus ring is super loose, at least on mine. So if you touch accidentally the focus ring during the animation, you're done, you will ruin your shot. 
because all the image moves with the focus ring. Next group, the all-time stop motion loft, Nikon Nikkor AI from 1977. Those are exceptional lens for our technique, with good glass, nice colors, great build quality and a good focus pull. They are also less sharp than modern lenses, which is good to work with puppets and sets because they make less maquette-like feeling. My favorite focal lengths would be the 28 and the 55mm and from there you can expand to the 85 or the 105. The small size of these lenses paired with a super close distance of focus at 20 or 25cm makes them a perfect lens to be in the set and leave extra space for the animator to move. Of course, with all Nikon glass you'll need an adapter to connect to a Canon body and no communication will happen between the camera and the lens. Not a big deal, but all the preview image calculations will no longer work and the preview will not match the final image. So double check your final exposure and compensate your preview in dragon frame. I've been using the Canon 24 to 105 f4L lens for almost 10 years now and it has been my go-to lens for everything during all this time. It creates super nice pictures and it has been super reliable for me. And I think it's super convenient to have that many focal length options all in one lens. My unit doesn't make aperture flicker, maybe for that I'm super happy. But I know that other L lenses, even that they are expensive, they create that kind of flicker. For example, I know that the 50mm f1.2 L makes a lot of flicker. You have to know that faster the lens or smaller the, the f-stop in the lens, the bigger the chance to get flicker. Finally, the cinema lens. Those lenses are amazing in terms of glass, build quality and operation. Those lenses are made to make cinema. So for example, something where those stand out is that when you pull focus, the image doesn't breathe. That's super common in all the photo lenses and it happens in all the lenses that we have seen. This is an effect that when you focus because the actual lens move seems like you make a zoom and it's a little bit annoying. Another thing in cinema lenses is that the light is measured in T-stops instead of F-stops and all the rings they have built-in gears so you can pull focus for example with a motor or a motion control or whatever. I like so much the Compact Prime CP2 from Zeiss. It's so bright and it makes a super nice picture. I think that any lens will make pictures, and so movies. So the most important is the way you use them. You have to balance between your budget and the picture style you are looking for. I found that Nikon AI lenses are nice to shoot puppets and sets, not as great to shoot product commercials. L-series or similar glass will be better for that. And when you need even better image, you can rent cinema glass. Just keep in mind that how you lit your scene is even more important than your gear. Well lit scenes will look great on any camera or lens. I hope all this has been useful. You'll find links to all the gear used in the description and make sure to subscribe cause in the next video I will talk about Flickr and how to avoid it. See you soon!